My next guest is a legend. He's a legend of Irish music who's been involved in show business for the last 50 years. Now, very, very specially, I have to say that Bob Dylan described this man as the best ballad singer he had ever heard. It is an absolute pleasure, I have to say, to welcome him back onto the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Liam Clancy. Those were the days, my friend, of the Hey. Welcome, Liam. Great fun. Poor John, he was shaking in his bunny skin back there. <laughs> and then he comes out and performs like a pro. He was good. Yeah, was brilliant. You could take him on board next time you're in the concert. Bloody right. <laughs> Anything that works. <laughs> Since we last met, you're getting all these accolades. You've been turned into a stamp. Uh, you were made in... I wasn't turned into a well, stamp. Well, you know what I mean. <laughs> we're on a stamp. I've yeah, got we're you. We're on a stamp. And, uh, there it is. There you are. Uh, the I'm the fellow with the guitar up in the air. Look at the hair I had. <laughs> Fine. I didn't need a cap then. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you're made a doctor in the uh, University of, uh, of Limerick. And yeah. So it's all right. going on. And my feeling was, watching you receive all these accolades and, and achievements, was that it's a bit premature to be giving you all this now as if to say, oh, it was a great career. I, there's more of where that came from, I take it. No, I'll tell you. See, Go on. I'm 72, right? OK. They figure he can't last long. And if we give him these things now, uh, he'll be making the will. Ah, oh, come <laughs> on. That's very cynical of you. <laughs> oh, well, you never know. You're... Well, ex excuse, excuse the voice. I, I, I got attacked by a virus down in Mexico. Mexico? Or California. I, can't, I don't know where. <laughs> no, it's not that I don't know where I was. <laughs> I don't know where your man attacked me. Yeah, absolutely. But it went, it went straight to my chest and, and into... I couldn't walk the... Last week, I couldn't walk. Gosh, and you made it here tonight. I'm on, I'm on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. They're working a treat. Gee, I couldn't walk up the stairs before I started taking them. Now I'm, I'm like an <laughs> Olympic athlete. Gosh, you know? If you stayed in California long enough, you could become governor. <laughs> uh, well, as long as you... Don't equate me with governor of New York now. Then. Yeah, no, 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 no mention of that. Uh, no, no, we'll keep that aside. Can I ask you about New York? The, hij the hijinks would be too much for me at this stage. <laughs> well, the stars might help you there. Um, <laughs> let's talk about uh, Bob Dylan for a moment, because he has given you these, th these comments, he's made these comments about you. G do you recall meeting him the first few times when you were lads hanging out? Oh, yeah. And what did you make of him? He was a young lad, um, came into New York. He was very innocent. Uh, seemingly, um, couldn't tune a guitar worth a damn, <laughs> but he, uh, he was hungry. He, 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 his thought processes were different from other people, you know, and he was a, a fidgety youth, full of uh, curiosity, uh, soaking up everything around him, and, and he was... He was different, very, very different. Uh, we became great pals. We were courting two sisters. Oh, yeah. I got a call the day before yesterday from a film animator. And he wants to do a, an animation. He's doing some of our songs, Clancy Brothers songs. He's nothing to do with the High Kings now. This is different. Sure. Uh, but he wants to do a thing with Bob Dylan and I, and he was asking me about... You know, how did a young Irish fella, a young Jewish fella, get together like that? And it was very much, very similar in, that, in, in many respects. I came from the small town of Carrick and Shure. Yeah. I was born in 1935. I left in 1956. And just shortly afterwards, my town and most of Ireland would have stepped out of uh, medieval times into the 20th century. Mm. And he was born in Hibbing, out in the, the plains, Minnesota. And his background would have been not that different. Yeah. 
it would have been very repressed. Nothing would have changed. Orthodox Jewish family, probably, you know. I had an Orthodox Catholic family. And we, we all, when I say we all, my brothers, and I, people like Dylan, people like Ginsburg, um, a lot of the jazz people, a lot of poets, people who were trying to escape repressed backgrounds like mine and Bob Dylan were uh, congregating in Greenwich Village. It was a place where you could be yourself, My, where you could get away from the, uh, the directives of your, the people who went before you, the people who, the, the people who you loved, but, but you know they had blinkers on. You know? Martin Scorsese made a, the, 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 the program No Direction Home about Bob Dylan, and Dylan was very keen to talk about you in that and the influence you had on his career. And I just want to show you a quick clip from that. There's Bob Dylan talking yeah. about you. Have a look at this, Liam. Liam was uh, profound. He would, uh, uh, you know, besides all of his uh, rebel songs and his acting career, he, he would have these incredible sayings, like once uh, he said to me, uh, after about 30 pints of Guinness, he was saying, and remember, Bob, no fear, no envy, no meanness. I said, hmm, right. <laughs> what do you suppose, what did you mean by that, no fear, no meanness? It's a good no line, envy? isn't it? sure is. I have no idea. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think we had thirty pints of Guinness. Yeah, I, we wouldn't be able to carry that much. But yeah. um, he, he had a mind like a vice grip, you know. And something that you might say off the cuff like that sure. would stick in his mind, and I, I would have totally gone by me. You, but I do. Yeah. I do. I do remember um, the occasion. Was, he was doing a concert in Dublin. And Bono organized, I think, a party afterwards over the Westbury. And we stayed up all night. And my wife and kids were there. They, they wanted to meet this great Bob Dylan, you know? Sure. And they were so disappointed when he came down from his room and stood at the top of the steps and he said, he looked around at all the adoring people waiting to meet him. And he, he said, where's Willie? Where's Willie? And my kids were so disappointed because they thought he'd want to meet me, you oh. know? And they didn't know who this Willie was. And of course, my brothers, when we used to hang out together, I was the youngest in the family. I was always called Willie. You remember? And uh, it was only stage, on stage that I was called Liam. Yes. So he knew me as Willie. <laughs> so, uh, he spotted me at the bar, and we. I remember Bono um, listening in on our conversation for about an hour. And then he. <laughs> He, he said, he said, guys, he said, I, 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 I got to get out of here. I'm going off to get some pizza or something. He said, everybody that you fellas have talked about for the last hour is dead. <laughs> <laughs> and it was true. Can, can, was... can I bring it back to the, to the heyday when yeah. you were really in the thick of it? I mean, you, it was Beatlemania in Iron Jumpers for you boys. I mean, you were yeah. going to hotel to hotel. You were being mobbed consistently. I mean, you had... It was, it was frightening. It's something that I don't know why people want to do it. I just don't know why people seek out celebrity because you have no life. You would have no life, you know. What was happening to you? Well, you couldn't go anywhere. 